earliest conversation I had about Rogue Nation was with Tom when we were making Edge of Tomorrow. We were working on the script for that movie one night, and uh, we'd had a very long discussion uh, about story. And Tom said, you should, you should direct the next Mission Impossible. Chris and I have the same sensibility in storytelling and the same love of films and the same kind of movies. He was an untitled writer of Ghost Protocol. And, you know, he and I spent a lot of time discussing this franchise, and he knows it inside and out. Just set, let's shoot and go. Well, my original vision for the film uh, was to take all four of the, of the films that came before it and lay them on top of one another and look for the holes. It really is you. I've heard stories. They can't all be true. With each film, I always walk away and it's like, okay, what did I learn? What can I do better? And McHugh's very much like that. Earliest idea from the story is that we, we didn't want to have an internal rift in the IMF. Uh, it felt as though several of the movies had done that and we didn't want to do that again. I'm afraid today is the day when the IMF's luck runs out. Story is, is king. Uh, and every shot has to forward that story and that narrative. Uh, so for me, always, it's, it's what I love about movies. I love a good story. The evolution of the story and the characters uh, ran on sort of parallel tracks. Ilsa started out uh, with a different name and a different agenda. She was a very different character at the beginning. We're after the same thing and I can help you. If you want to bring down the syndicate, you have to let me out. With the mission and storytelling, there are certain things that you can get away with and, and a leap that you can make structurally with, with storytelling that the audience wants. I'm not interested in playing games, Brad. And I'm not interested in seeing my friends get killed either. So if I'm gonna betray them, we're gonna do this on my terms. The story itself was completely malleable. We, what we decided to do early on was we embraced, uh, this was an action film and it involved very big action set pieces. So we started there. We started by creating the set pieces and rearranging them, saying, well, okay, here's a, we have this set piece. Is it better in the first act of the movie? Is it better in the last act of the movie? In a musical, the two characters are in love, or the two characters are, you know, they're separated, and the drama is, is seems very, you know, it's very simple, but it, it allows that. And, and there's a progression of story with each number when it's done really well. I feel the same way with action sequences, and I'll sit down with the stunt guys and, and I'll tell them, you know, we'll go through it, and Chris and I'll go through and say, this is the introduction of our character, and within this sequence, you're, well, I, here's what I want a, the audience to feel. What's the story here? With every shot, every sequence, you know, we want that kind of, of progression. We learned a lot on Jack Reacher about what it took to make uh, a really effective car chase. And so Tom and I came up with this sequence that evolved from a car to a motorcycle. Then we let the trajectory of those action sequences determine what the character's motivations were. And those motivations then started to give shape to the story. Once you have that kind of suspense, you, it allows for character comedy and character drama. What Chris is also brilliant at is writing for the actor. So with each person that's coming in, he's, he'll, you know, we're, we're gonna look at and adjust the character to them. Get him ready, please. So I wrote scenes that I, that I thought were interesting emotionally as a way to give actors things to work with. Uh, and it was only when I started to watch actors read the scenes that I started to discover who Ilsa might be. Precious few people know about your true identity. It would be unfortunate if we forgot. Everything that came into the story came organically from the fact that we had this very inorganic beginning. We just put the action scenes in a, in a certain order and then watched the characters grow around it. Everything that we were doing was trying to create a confrontation whereby Ethan killed Solomon. And no matter how we did it, it didn't feel right. It just, it, it always felt empty, it felt unearned. And there was a moment where I turned to Tom and said, I don't think we can kill this guy. 
And Tom thought for one minute about it, and he said, you're absolutely right, we can't. And so it went from Ethan hunting for the villain to Ethan drawing the villain into a trap. We're constantly rewriting and working. You don't know what's gonna happen next. The movie is shifting around us all the time. Face to face, just as you wished, Ethan. Just when you think you've got to figure it figured out, that's what a mission movie's like.